Right, the other camera either ran out of battery or ran out of memory. So I don't know whether I captured anything I said about this Huntington Castle in honour of the Earls of Huntington, of Matilda of Huntington, Countess of Wolfioff. This is a very emotional time for me being here. I talk about Matilda a lot and Wolfioff, and I'm hoping to find Wolfioff's Crowland Abbey tomorrow where Wolfioff's Wolfioff was buried. That's Matilda of Huntington's father and my 25 times great-grandfather. Anyway, here we have the Huntington Castle Hills. See? The Mott and the Bailey. Castle building to Pitney. I've, I read all this on the other um, camera, but I don't think it saved it. You are standing in a place that has great stories to tell about the history of Huntington, a site of sieges and battles for power, of quiet religious contemplation, and a place of punishment for prisoners. And basically, it's talking about the Vikings, the Danes, um, invaded Britain and attacked the Anglo-Saxons. Huntington was occupied by the invaders. Um, the Vikings were probably the first to build some defensive earthworks on the site. In 921, King El Edward the Elder, son of Alfred the Great, attacked and drove the Vikings out. It became a centre of importance. And then you've got the Mott and the Bailey, built in 1068 on the orders of William the Conqueror. Um, the Doomsday Book states that 20 dwellings were demolished to make way for the castle. It was built by soldiers and forced labour. This is where I got to when the other camera suddenly went but I don't it could have been memory there could be a lot I haven't recorded the site is surrounded by a large defensive ditch on three sides and the river of on the fourth on the top more or bowed where the pine trees now stand would have been a tower and the bailey area below would have been protected by earthen ramparts so there would have been a gatehouse to the castle so that over there where the pine trees are look that is actually where the castle was, over there. So that would have been where the castle was, where those pine trees are, look. Not where I'm standing now, that would have been the castle. Huntington Castle is a scheduled ancient monument. Despite alterations down the centuries, it is largely well preserved. Around 600 Mott and Bailey castles are recorded. They are important to the study of Norman England and our understanding of the feudal system. A jail was also housed on this site with prison wardens. In the interior of the Bailey below, you are below you are the grass footings of buildings. It is not certain what these relate to. So basically, down there, there's footings of other buildings. So the castle was up there, okay? Huntington Castle played an important role in the rebellion against King Henry II in 1174. At that time, it was owned by William I, King of Scotland, who was also Earl of Huntington, and who sided with the rebels. Henry II himself came to Huntington and besieged the castle for a month and then ordered it to be destroyed. So that even though Matilda married into the um, Scottish family, because they were all related and interrelated anyway, the Scots were down here. It's interesting, isn't it? A stone chapel that's been built at the castle survived the demolition and was given to Huntington Priory in 1327. In 1975, during the construction of the steps down to the river, archaeological excavation revealed several human burials here. It was also used in the English Civil War in 1642-48. At one time there was a windmill here. here. Right, so there we are. And just so, this is it. This is an important family tree trip. This is probably more important to me, this bit here, than going to Oliver Cromwell's museum. So this, to me, is absolutely fantastic. I'm going to go over there in a minute. 
I'm really over, I'm overwhelmed that I've managed to get here through the storms, wind and rain. I managed to get to Matilda Earl of, and the Earls of Huntington's home all that thousand years ago. So this is Sheila in Huntington battling the elements. Over and out for a minute while I take photos. Right, here it is everyone. I'm in Huntington. Here's all that's left of the mound of Matilda of Huntington and the Earls of Huntington's castle. <laughs> Built for and given to them in their honour. This is a meadow here. I'm just going to walk up there with the video before it pours with rain again. I'm dicing with lots of storms at the moment. <laughs> But here we have, there's a plaque at the top. I'm on top of Matilda of Huntington's castle in Huntington. Matilda of Huntington. I can't say, I'll take a picture of that. I don't know what it says at the moment. But uh, obviously they use this as a beacon. There's the bridge, there's the bypass. The Huntington Bypass. And all this here is the part of the, what was the castle of Huntington. This is so important to me. I feel quite emotional, really, because I talk about Matilda of Huntington and Wealthy Off and all them all the time. The Earls of Huntington. Oh, I'm so pleased. Huntington Castle Hills. You are standing in a place that has great stories to tell about the history of Huntington. A site of seizures and battles for power, of quiet religious contemplation and a place of punishment for prisoners. Just turning off a minute in case we lose it. Right, turning back on. Early history. In the 9th century, the Vikings or Danes invaded Britain to attack and plunder the Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. Huntington was occupied by the invaders and it became their main centre of activity in this region, most likely because of its good road and river communications. The Vikings were probably the first to build some defensive earthworks on this site. In 921, King Edward the Elder, son of Alfred the Great, attacked and drove the Vikings out. By the mid-10th century, with a mint, a market and several churches, Huntington was an important urban centre. The Mott and Bailey Castle. Hunton Castle was built in 1068 on the orders of William the Conqueror after the Norman invasion. He needed castles to help him keep military and political control of England. The inhabitants of Huntington may have to come to the castle to pay taxes to William's representative. The Doomsday Book states that 20 dwellings were demolished to make way for the castle. The layout of the surviving earthworks confirmed that a castle was a Melt and Bailey type. It would have been built quickly by soldiers and local forced labour, using mostly wood instead of stone. So this is the mark, and there's the bailey over there, I think. It might be the other way round. The site is surrounded by a large defensive ditch on three Hi sides. folks, follow me. The evening sun is out at last after all the storms, and here I am, Sheila, in Huntington, with the noisy Huntington Bypass but the beautiful river below. A huge river that was once part of the defence of the castle. There's a wall going around the bottom there. Apparently you can get down there, there's walks and everything. My ancestors were here a thousand years ago. This was the bailey and there's, fo there's footings here of other buildings. I'm overwhelmed, everyone, with this terror, this beautiful, I was going to say terrible, but well, I can't think of words, actually. I'm so excited that I found that I got to here despite all the storm. I never thought I was going to make it to Huntington. To, the weather, was, I didn't even leave home to quarter to two. I, I would have been over here a lot earlier. See that big black cloud? That passed over not long ago. I took shelter near an old jail. Yeah, down there some steps. I think we're going to the castle first. We might come back. We'll just have a look. Let's just go down by the river and have a look a minute. So I might not come back. 
this way. Look, this was the castle of Huntington. But this site belonged to the Anglo-Saxons and then the Vikings and then the Normans. And here's the... Here's a footpath down there. Um, we just have a quick look. It says to in the leaflet. If you can, it says just go down to the river. I can't remember why. There was something down here. Oh yeah, from this side. Um, earlier I was on another bridge over the other side of this river. A seven, a five arch bridge. Because I took pictures of that old derelict house there. Quite a nice house. And look at this huge... I can't remember. I'll have a look at the leaflet in a minute. Tell me why I should come this way. We'll just do it. I don't know if I'll ever come back, you see. That is a famous meadow as well. I'll just have a look on the leaflet to tell us what this meadow was. One of the largest water meadows, apparently, this is. Somewhere around here, something called Mill Common, they found loads of skeletons, 400 skeletons. Um, a Saxon cemetery it was, and there was also a Roman villa down this way. I don't know if this is the place. So I'm not, I'm not going to follow this. All I'm doing, this is uh, up, well that, we're the other side of the castle mound here. You can show how big it was. The bypass, I can't believe they allowed the bypass to cut through a castle. The Ouse Valley, I think this is called. The Ouse Valley, the largest water meadow in England. It was a race course until 1896 and an airdrome, 1910 to 1913. I can't remember walking under here. I must have done though. And there's the other bridge, look. The Five Arch Bridge, which links God Manchester, an old Roman town, with Huntington. I walked over that myself earlier. I'm trying to fit in as much as I can on the short time I'm here. And look at this monster, this big concrete monster over the River Ouse. Splitting the town, if you like, really. Awful, isn't it? really is horrible and yet there's beauty beyond so along here along this valley they found 400 skeletons from an anglo-saxon burial site god manchester which i'd like to have got to by the way was the site of um the romans roman settlement over there i've heard of it but time is so restricted Right, so I'm taking you on a bit of my journey while I'm away doing my family tree trip. Of course, this river would have probably been here, it must have been, when they built the castle. Of course it was, it was part of the defence mechanism. They didn't have that monstrosity, and not, 
and it didn't have that noise either. I always pack a lot in when I'm away, mind. Oh, look at it though. Just carved straight the way through. But we're going to go up to the pine trees now where the the castle once was. The Mott and Bailey. The Mott with the tower. All this was the castle. It's very important for our family history, by the way. Whether you want to believe it or not, this is very real. The Earls of Huntington were honoured and given this castle. Matilda of Huntington was William the Conqueror's great niece. Her mother was one of the most powerful and richest women ever in England, Judith de Lens. All this is true and recorded in history. I'm overwhelmed, everyone. I find family tree extremely rewarding. And that's why it's so important for me to do the footwork. Unless you come here, it all seems like a fairy tale. Till you come and feel the earth. See the place, the rivers. The old medieval towns. Then you know it's not a fairy tale, it was real. The English were very good at record keeping. They knew every man, woman, pig and chicken in a house, every household. For tax reasons. Right, here we are folks, we're getting to the top of this, this mound. These pine trees are symbolic. And for me, they're going to represent my Huntington family. These trees. I love trees. And for me, I would take a couple of acorns with me. In remembrance of... In remembrance of the Earls of Huntington of Matilda of Huntington and her children and believe it or not it is true the Queen is also related to Matilda she goes directly back to David I the Queen does so here we are this is it folks so just over there you've got where people are living look see people are living there I'm going to go back on that path in a minute apparently it'll take me up up that way somewhere it'd be better than walking along a road won't it so this is the castle this is the big big mound that Huntington Castle was built on I'm sharing this with my family. It'll go on YouTube as well. This is a very important visit for me. I talk about Matilda a lot. People might smirk and all the rest of it. But this is real, real history, folks. Over and out.